All right, I'm um, just going to discuss here very quickly for those who are just starting out the difference between imperial and metric. Uh, when people say imperial or metric, they're usually talking about wrench sizes. So, for example, here on the wall on the left side, we have all imperial sizes, and on the right side, we have all metric sizes, which is a reasonably okay um, organizational scheme. Um, Imperial and metric are just two different units of measurement. Uh, metric will consist mainly of uh, units such as meters, kilograms, so, so stuff like that. And uh, imperial or uh, standard is usually in its inches, feet, miles, units such as those. But when you're talking about wrenches, um, metric will be measured in uh, millimeters. So these wrenches are well, we have the smallest one here, eight millimeters, and it goes all the way up to our largest one here is actually 26 millimeters, but it's the labeled one is 19. So it would be, for example, that little one would be eight millimeter wrench, then 10 millimeter, all the way up to 19 millimeter. Imperial wrenches are different. They're measured in inches. So the smallest one we have here, hard to see, but it's a 5 16 inch wrench. And then we go up to 3 8 7 16 half, 9 sixteenths, 5 eighths, and so on and so forth, usually in 16th inch increments until so you get to the uh, really large sizes of wrenches in which point they go up by eighth of an inch increments or even sometimes quarter inch increments depending on the size of them. So we got really big ones that aren't even labeled here. So you probably, if you're just starting out, you won't need anything bigger than an inch. And even that is pushing it. So um, just two different units of measurement. Uh, I'll show you here quickly what the difference between uh, metric and imperial bolt is just so you have a quick guide and identification to figure out what wrench you should be using because it's very important that you use the correct wrench for the bolt that you're taking off or nut that you're taking off. So here we have a Yamaha. It's Japanese, which is therefore safe to assume that all the bolts used or the majority of the bolts used in this motorcycle will be metric. Metric bolts usually have a number identifier on the top head to indicate uh, its grade. An imperial or standard bolt will have markings on the top head like this in this sort of fashion to indicate its grade. So for example, in this case we have three markings in like a triangle type shape which indicates that it is a grade 5 bolt. Now you have markings also where there are six markings on them that are evenly spaced between these that I don't have, which is a grade 8 bolt. Um, if a bolt has no markings on the top head, it's not safe to assume it's one or the other. Sometimes you just have to figure out what vehicle, it's, what type of vehicle it's on. North American style vehicles will have typically um, imperial bolts on it, while Japanese and some European vehicles will have metric bolts. It just depends on the standardization of the bolts. Um, both metric and imperial bolt heads, some of them have absolutely no indication of uh, what type of bolts they are. So do be careful when you uh, try to throw a wrench on it. So how do you figure out what size of bolt it is when you're on the, when you're trying to take a bolt off or a nut off? Well, easiest way is throw a wrench on it, see if it fits. Well, I've been doing this for long enough, so I knew that that was a 12 millimeter because 12 millimeter is a very standard size of metric bolt. But if you're starting out, you might not know just by looking at a bolt what size it is. So if you can figure out if it's metric or imperial, great. If you can't, throw on a plethora of wrenches on it and see which one fits best. Sometimes you'll uh, stumble across a bolt that doesn't seem to figure out, like the imperial sizes are either too loose or don't fit. So try metric, and the same thing with metric. If you find one, two sizes, a 13 and 14, for example, and 13 is a little too loose and 14 doesn't fit, or 14 is too loose and 13 doesn't fit, try a imperial size. So common imperial sizes. What are the most common imperial sizes that you'll probably end up using? Well, the three most common ones are these three right here, 7 16ths, half inch, and 9 16 Those ones you'll be using a whole heck of a lot. Realistically, ever, all of these are more well used. So 11 sixteenths and 5 eighths, uh, depending on the larger applications, will use three quarters extensively and 15 sixteenths extensively. So 
all these are very common to have like it's not uncommon to have any of these sizes so there's not really common sizes unlike metric which has more standardized sizes where you don't have each of these sizes as will be up size and bolt so for example if you're a metric most common sizes would be eight millimeter you'll typically not have a nine millimeter size 10 millimeter is incredibly common you'll typically not have any 11 millimeter bolts 12 millimeter is common 13 millimeter that's a little tricky one because 13 millimeter is actually almost identical to half inch so if you put a 13 millimeter on something and it seems to sort of fit um grab a half inch as well and double check that it's not a half inch because most likely half inch is incredibly common so you'll throw a 13 and oh it's pretty close but uh you could end up stripping the head because you're using the wrong size and i can't remember which one and so on let me find out let me tell you real quick which one's bigger all right see that bolt sticking upright it's in a magnetic trace so just to kind of hold it in place because i have to do this one hand that right there is a 5 16 bolt 5 16 refers to the diameter of the shank here not the head size so i know because after you start working with hardware like this you'll find figure you'll fi figure out very quickly what's the actual size of the head when you look at the bolt so for example common size is a 5 16 so that means they'll have a half inch head on it uh common size another common size is 3 8 3 8 shank on the diameter here will have a 9 16 head and a quarter inch on the shank will have a 7 16 on the head okay so here we have our nice little 5 16 bolt. So we'll start with taking our 13 millimeter metric size, okay? Go on the ground here. So, if you take our 13 millimeter here, we can put our 13 millimeter on the head. It fits just fine. But if you look carefully, you'll notice, now oh, let's see if I can do this a little bit better. You will notice, that 13 millimeter has a wee little bit of play when you uh, put it on. So you see it moves a little bit side to side. So let's take this a 13 millimeter there. So let's take our half inch wrench. Look at that. It's got less play. It's got a lot, a little bit less play in it. And this becomes incredibly important when you uh, are taking off rusted or very old bolts because that little bit of play when you to think about 13 millimeter as opposed to half inch could be the difference between stripping a bolt and pulling it off. So if it's 13, double check, make sure it's not half inch because 13 isn't nearly as common as half inch. Half inch is very common. Okay, like I was showing earlier, 13, not incredibly common. Most likely you're gonna have a half inch bolt. 14 though, on the other hand, is quite common. It's a very common metric size. 14 and 15 are both very common. 16, um, seen it around, so is 17. 17's all reasonably common. 19 and 18, this is where, um, again, it gets a little funky because, uh, this is not. So, um, 18 is actually almost identical to, I wish I had, um, 18 millimeter here. I can show you that the 18 millimeter is very close to three quarters, but 19 is pretty common size as well. So, um, with the 18, same thing goes with the half inch. Just make sure it's not a three quarters. Probably won't be using 18 if you're just starting out, but double check, make sure it's not a three quarters. You could, I think they're almost like, as the size of the bolt's so big, if you accidentally use it 18 instead of a three quarters, not the end of the world. It's just because of the, the 5 16 bolt or the, with the half inch head on it, is so small that that little bit of difference makes, it's, it's a difference between stripping a bolt and uh, pulling it off. So that's a little bit extended. I probably didn't need to talk about all of that. Probably cut out the stuff that I won't talk about. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Wrenches. Um, good place to start. Not the best place to start. Best place to best tool set to have is a good socket set. Sockets work in the place of wrenches. And for example, you have our imperial size sockets here and our metric size sockets here, and they go on what's called a socket wrench which just turns in which allows you to turn the socket in one direction so you can turn the wrench like this back and forth and only turn the bolt one direction or and then you can switch that with this little thing here so you can do it in one direction and not the other all right probably a little too much information but it's good to know
So hopefully you guys uh, learn something and maybe start your own projects yourself. Start taking something apart. It's the quickest way to learn. All right. This is uh, Mike. Um, if you've got any questions, comments, please feel free to ask because I'm more than willing to answer. All right. Take care, guys.